Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here in the Home Weather Office with another detailed update on our disturbance coming off of Africa for Wednesday, September the 20th, 2023. We're going to break down all the details you need to know about this disturbance as it moves further west. Now, a big disclaimer is that all of my videos and live streams are for entertainment purposes only and to discuss raw operational model guidance and its ensembles. I'm also comparing models, so please seek official sources like the National Weather Service, the National Hurricane Center, or the Weather Channel for more detailed and accurate information. So taking a look at the entire Atlantic here on our True Color Visible Satellite Imagery from TropicalTidbits.com, and we can see with what we have going on right now in the Atlantic Basin, we have Hurricane Nigel that is beginning to weaken as it begins to move off towards the north or towards the northeast right now with winds that are right around 80 to 90 miles an hour. This is probably going to get weaker in the next advisory from the NHC as it begins to get sheer and dry air entrainment. But what we are really concerned about in today's video, and it's going to be the discussion in my future videos, is the disturbance coming off of Africa here. I circled this in red because this has a better chance of moving further west versus Nigel versus Lee that we're able to gain latitude before hitting the Leeward Islands. So this is going to be a system that we might have to watch for several more days, probably the next couple of weeks, as this is going to be one of those long trackers that we have to monitor. But not, not only that, we also have to keep an eye on the system too off the Florida coast with all this deep convection. This is also uh, dubbed an area of interest from the NHC, and this also has a 30 to 50% chance of tropical formation in the next seven days. Looking at the seven-day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center, we can see, again, there is Nigel. Winds will probably be down to about 80 or 85 miles an hour in the next advisory, since, again, that dry air and shear will then eventually destroy the inner core. It's also going to be moving over cooler water so Nigel, not a big problem in the immediate future or throughout or throughout the entire period. Instead, we're going to be keeping an eye on our disturbance off the Carolina coast, Florida coast. This has a 1040 in the next two to seven days. And again, gale force winds potentially near tropical storm force is possible in days to come. So any people living Along the Carolina coast, Georgia definitely need to be on the lookout for this system since very intense rainfall, strong winds, high surf. Again, it's going to be a fairly impactful system. And you know how these systems could take full advantage of the warmer waters right down here just off of the coast of Great Abaco in the Bahamas. So yeah, that system is also on our watch list. And of course, we are keeping an eye on disturbance number one. This has a 70% chance. Yep, you're okay. Thank you. I'm glad um, that web page is blocked. I don't know why that happened. Um, crazy stuff on the internet, I guess, uh, causing that to get blocked. But anyways, a tropical wave is currently located a couple hundred miles southeast of the Cabo Verde Islands. The system is expected to merge with another disturbance located a few hundred miles to its west in a few days. Environmental conditions are forecast to be conducive for gradual development, and a tropical depression is likely to form late this week or the weekend while the system moves generally westward at 10 to 15 miles an hour and again this has now a 70 percent chance a high chance folks for tropical formation in the next seven days so yes that is a high chance it is dubbed red on the nhc so looking a little closer at that disturbance right now we really i want to just kind of clarify on which what area we're really looking at right now and it is this deep area of convection that was there this morning you can see uh we got uh westerlies on the southern side we have this wrap around kind of motion but the good thing is in the immediate future, uh, it depends on how you look at this, there's a lot of dry air and stable air to its north. You can see very little cloud cover here on the northern and western sides and that drier air is wrapping around preventing some deep convection but eventually we're going to see a moistening of this pocket of energy as this continues to move off towards the west and i do strongly believe 
we're going to see some development with this tropical wave in the next five to seven days. Even so, some of the models are going really bullish at this app, uh, producing maybe a major hurricane. That's very unlikely for the time being, and we really have to be careful with what we wish for here. Uh, after all, we should never be wishing for any storms like this, as this could impact uh, areas downstream like Leeward or Windward Islands. So right now, it's a good thing that we have dry, dusty air that is impacting the system. But eventually, the environmental, the background environment should become pretty conducive for the moistening and organizing of this pocket of vorticity. Now, I did discuss this on my Twitter post yesterday and also this uh, afternoon. If you guys wanted to go check that out after this video, you guys can go ahead and uh, take a look at that. There will be a link in the description leading to that specific Twitter post that I did. And we're going to compare models as this disclaimer in this video really illustrates. Here is our wave pocket that we have moving off of Africa right now, right? We have Nigel exiting the picture here. We have this mid-Atlantic ridge that is going to be building in. So it's going to be strengthening. Otherwise, if this ridge was weakening or it was uh, moving more in this general direction, then this system would likely move off where Nigel is or where Margo went, where it, they were able to turn well before hitting Bermuda. So uh, those were no impactful systems by any means. This system is going to be a little different, and it's because what's going on to the north. So this is the GFS 850 millibar geopotential height. And just a quick analysis with what we're looking at here for some of you that are new to the channel that haven't seen these videos is these color areas or the color shading is the vorticity, how much spin there is in the atmosphere. And these lines, you can see this right here, these are thicknesses, so it's a measurement of how thick or how strong these ridges or troughs are by looking at the heights at 850 millibars. And these wind barbs show us which way the wind is blowing from. So right now, we have trade winds that are blowing like this. So hopefully that clears up a lot of confusion. So let's go forward here in time and let's take a look at what uh, what this disturbance might be doing if my... Uh, if my internet could cooperate. So there it is uh, in two days. There is our wave. So again, we have another one of these down here. We have another one up here. And it's all about which area will kind of consolidate and form a closed surface slow. Now, as you all know, this is a Russia roulette situation. We have a ridge to the north that we talked about, but we also have this area down here, and this might be enough to pinwheel this down a little further south. So a lot of variability on if that actually happens. Which one consolidates? If this one down here consolidates, this is pretty far south, uh, roughly about 9 or 10 degrees north in latitude. And that means if it even moved this general direction, similar to with what we had with um, Lee, with what we had with Franklin, you all know how those are actually it was Lee mainly. Um, it moved in this general direction. You know, it we thought it would hit the northern leewards, but it didn't. So we got to watch this one. Even so that, oh, most of the models, David, are showing that it's going to do this, it's going to do that. Again, a model, a weather computer model, is not an actual current forecast. There are variabilities that come into play here. Is this ridge stronger or weaker to the north? How is this down here going to all evolve? There's a lot of what-if situations. So going forward here, uh, out to day three, we can see there's the vorticity pocket. But take note here. Now, once we uh, have Nigel, okay, Hurricane Nigel is keeping this ridge from building in. That's going to leave the picture a little sooner than what we thought. Here's our disturbance right here off the uh, Florida coast. You can see it on the uh, northwestern edge of the image. And so that sets the edge to where this ridge is able to build. And so when we go forward in time, we have this uh, mid-Atlantic ridge that builds in at 850 millibars. And what that's going to do is it's not only a strong ridge, but it's also a deep one. If we take a look at the 808 or 500 millibar uh, chart here you can see how strong this ridge is see this is northeasterly flow on the back side of the cyclone and we even have northeasterly flow kind of out in front of this 
Well, when we have a strengthening system, the net flow is that the system is going to try to move in towards the west. That's what the GFS has. We also have another bit of this ridge to the west of this main ridge. So uh, the ending story here is big ridge that builds in the mid-Atlantic here is not going to allow this to just go this way right away or kind of curve out like this. We're not seeing a recurving scenario like we had with Lee margo and nigel and uh, also a few others right the pattern is different this go around than what we had literally with nigel margo and lee so going forward here uh this is out to this is pretty much for this is about seven days out and we can see there is a system there impacting some of the leeward islands now again uh, what i'm showing you all is just a forecast and a big disclaimer in my videos is that i do use raw operational model guidance and it's ensembles and everything like that okay we could see a lot of shifts does this go further south does this go further north i want to be clear with myself here that what you see on the map right now over the leeward islands does not mean that oh my gosh we got to get prepared right now because it's going to hit us we have seen a lot of variability and a great example is if we look at the last six model runs from the gfs if we go back here uh we're going to use precipitation so you all can see that so here's uh the the system on this model run this is six model or this is six hours ago 12 hours ago uh this is 15 hours ago and 24 hours ago and so we can see there has been a lot of shifts here but generally in the same area within this bubble that i have circled in we have seen this system kind of hang around this area so the chances are, is it going to impact the Leeward Islands now, you all are wondering. The chances are fairly low for right now. We got to wait until this thing actually consolidates, where it consolidates, how strong the ridge to the north will be, and how that will influence our disturbance, right? There's a lot of uh, puzzle pieces that need to be figured out in the modeling or the numerical computer models uh, for them to better dissect and be able to correct. All right. We're going to see more corrections possibly further north here. So my overall forecast is that you all on the Virgin Islands right over here, or I should circle this in a little bit better. Actually, let me back it out. So you all right in here some of these islands you definitely need to be watching this system areas further to the south i would not worry just yet okay until i get more model guidance in but the ending story or or basically long story short is yes the leeward islands even including for say saint kitts and nevis as well as some of the other islands down there need to just kind of be aware uh, and watch my videos for latest information on what might end up happening. So this is a look at the Euro model. This is the ECMWF, and this is more of a, I'm not saying an outlier. It is certainly a possibility. If we go forward in time, and this is acting up on us a little bit, uh, you can see the 850 millibar, uh, not really strong by any means, a lot different scenario than what we have on the GFS. If we actually look at the two different models, uh, the GFS has a stronger ridge to the north, whereas the Euro has a weaker ridge to the north, or at least some portions of this ridge is eroded. So therefore, the system is going to, or the Euro thinks the system is going to go like this. And let's kind of play that through. See how it goes north, because now we have developed a weakness in the ridge. There's a lot of variability here. Now showing you the Canadian model, uh, let's look at that one. So there is Nigel right on the side of the screen, going to exit the picture. Here is... Um, that disturbance and you can see this gets pretty close uh, to the leeward islands here of the virgin puerto rico perhaps i mean right in this area definitely don't ignore this just yet not only that the canadian may want another system and another system after that so again the very busy atlantic continues here towards the end of september with numerous tropical waves that have a possibility at developing into 
our next name, Storms. By the way, the next name on our list of names would be Philia, Ophelia, or Philia, however you, you pronounce it. I think I got it right the first time. So it would be our letter O storm, and this would be the 16th named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season. I mean, this has been a truly busy one, and we'll be looking at climatology here in just a second. But uh, long story short is, yes, if you're on the islands, don't ignore this one at all right now, okay? Because this could go further west, and if it does, there are big problems ahead that the system may suffer. Or, or bad news ahead, in other words. So now, looking at our sea surface tempters, this is one of my favorite products that I actually like to use. This is from the University of Miami, and these are actual sea surface temperatures. These are not anomalies. We know the Caribbean is very warm, two or three degrees Celsius above the long-term average right now, uh, recordly warm for mid to late September. And just because you see these green colors down here to the south does not, does not mean that, oh, temperatures are cool there. That's nice. That's That feels great. No. If you look at the chart here, these waters are 29 to 30 Celsius. Water temperatures here in the northwestern Caribbean, like Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, uh, the island of youth here in western Cuba, water temperatures are 32 to 33 Celsius. And yes, down here near Venezuela, water temperatures 32 and a half to 33 Celsius. And yeah, look at these waters over the Leeward and Windward Islands, 31 to 32 Celsius. So very, very warm, more than warm enough with the upper ocean heat content that I'm about to show you is more than favorable enough, at least in sea surface temperature sense, to sustain a violent hurricane easily. No question about it at all. So here's a look at the Gulf of Mexico. I wanted to show you all this. The Gulf is also very warm, 31, almost 32. In fact, a couple of areas here. 32 Celsius above normal. That is upper, upper 80s, like 88, 89 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 8 degrees warmer than what you need to sustain a major hurricane. And this is just asking for trouble for if, I mean, if again, if this goes into the Caribbean, the Northwestern Caribbean, and then makes its turn similar to Ian and goes like this, we could be in trouble. If you're in Tampa, Florida, if you are in, uh, say, Cape Coral, Florida, this could be a really big concern. Even if this goes straight into the Big Bend of Florida, again, hypothetically, not causing fear or uh, or panic. I want to be clear with that. Okay, this time of the year, you know, those systems come off lower in latitude off of Africa. They can go further west, sneak their way into the Caribbean, and what's next? Once it gets into the Caribbean, does it go into the northwestern Caribbean and then make the turn into the Gulf of Mexico? We just don't know. We saw it with Ian. Who knows? We could be seeing another Ian 2.0. Not saying we will, but you, you, you just cannot turn your back on the tropics this time of the year. Okay, so that's a look at that. Now, as far as upper ocean heat content... This really got my attention last night, okay? Me, Pat's Path Predictor, and a few others in my Discord server, we were talking about how warm these waters are, but oh, I just cannot wrap my head around of how high the upper ocean heat content literally is in the Gulf of Mexico, including the Caribbean. My goodness. And again, the words that I say here, I'm not trying to cause fear or anything, but these numbers here are really, really high. And when I mean high, I mean, look at the index down here. So these red colors in the loop current that is in the Gulf of Mexico, that's 175, 170 on the amount of ocean heat content that is being stored in the ocean, I mean, not just at the surface, but deep down. I mean, the Gulf is really, really open for business. If anything moves into this area, you better hope it doesn't. Because if it does, you better look out. It could be a lease situation where we have a Cat 1 one minute, then we have a Cat 5 the next, right? Things could really take off quickly in the Atlantic. Not only that, or and not in the Atlantic, in the Gulf of Mexico, but also in the Atlantic, but look at this, in the Northwestern Caribbean, 
I, I, need, I just needed to make sure I'm seeing things right. I'm not hallucinating or, or anything like that. This is legitimate data here from the University of Miami. Look at these numbers here. Look at these colors. I mean, these are just uncharted record territory. This is just sickening. 200. I mean, the map really only goes up to 175 in the larger sector of things. I had to actually zoom in and take a little snapshot of the Northwestern um, Caribbean. And yeah, that is 190 to 200. The highest I could find, which is right in here, so somewhere in here, 205 kilojoules per centimeter of upper ocean heat content. I mean, 150 or say 100 is high enough to sustain Cat 4, Cat 5 hurricanes, but wow, uh, 200 plus is just mind-boggling. I mean that's just ridiculous. I mean, plain on ironic. It's just simple way to put it. Again, I'm not causing, trying to cause fear or panic here. That's not what I'm here for. I'm extrapolating the data as I see it. And that's why I have the disclaimer at the beginning of this video for many reasons that need to be said. Okay. So another big disclaimer is that what you're looking at here. Now, this is a new map that I don't show very often in my videos. This is the potential, the potential maximum wind intensity, okay? This is assuming that you have very little shear that's generally under 5 or 10 knots. You have a lot of moisture, okay? Think about how much moisture you have surrounding these cyclones. Remember what Lee did, right? Lee a lot of moisture at the beginning allowed it to become a cat 5 hurricane right and it happened right in this area where we have the bluest colors that's cat 5 intensity that's what the h's represent here so this is basically kind of showing you if everything was perfect the shear was under 5 or 10 knots, lots of moisture, the upper ocean heat content was high, sea surface temperatures are really warm to begin with, right? When everything lines up perfectly is what this is kind of showing you. We could be dealing with some big time hurricanes throughout the Caribbean if there's no shear or a lot of dry air. Things should take off very quickly here, including for the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, we we don't don't let's not turn our back yet on the Gulf, the Caribbean, or the southwestern Atlantic. Speaking of that, the Cape Verde season begins to shut down by late September, early October, and we really start focusing on the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, as well as the southwestern portion of the Atlantic, like the Bahamas. So, yes, we are still kind of in that peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. Even so, we are coming down off that peak. We're still pretty active, at least through mid to late October. And we, again, cannot stop tracking the tropics until, well, there's nothing to watch out there in the next several days. Well, that is kind of an understatement since we have a couple of areas to watch. Not to mention, look at over here where that disturbance off the Carolina coast I mean, if everything is perfect, that could also take off pretty quickly. Maybe a subtropical storm, if not maybe a hurricane. We just don't know. A lot of these systems could really play a big trick on us. We saw Hannah. We thought Hannah going over the Gulf was not going to become a hurricane right initially. Well, it did at the end when it made landfall over the southern coast of Texas. So again, we just cannot take our eyes you know, our binoculars off of the main development region for the short term. And we got to start looking at what might happen down the road in the Caribbean, not to mention that disturbance coming off of Africa. If it gets into the Caribbean, I have a bad vibe about this, that this could be one of those systems. We better hope it does not end up being a Lee situation or a Dorian, not a really Dorian because Dorian didn't move through this area. Uh, but we better hope it doesn't become a major hurricane because if it does, a lot of people could be impacted by this one. So now that we talked about the tropics again, just to kind of illustrate, we didn't really talk much about the system off the Carolina coast. Um, actually, we could probably show you that really quickly because again, I don't want to forget about you all. I, I do not, I'm not here to kind of skip over you all all the time. So let's take a look at that 
this is what we need okay so looking at the gfs model again we do have to watch this this thing could take off very quickly could become a subtrop storm on the approach to the North Carolina coast, including for Virginia, bring a lot of rain for this area. If we take a look at total amounts of rainfall, maybe as much as two to four inches. If we look at the European model really quickly, take a look at that. Uh, system does not look to be very strong according to the Euro. Uh, let's look at the Canadian really quickly. Also not very strong. So the GFS being more bullish and it's going to be interesting which model is correct. I'm telling you what, though, if the GFS gets this subtropical system pretty close, I'm really concerned about with what might happen when this gets into the Eastern Caribbean, the other disturbance that we talked about. All right, so lots of rain, wind, surf, and coastal flooding impacts potentially for the Carolina coast. We did a brief update on that disturbance, which again has a 40% chance of tropical formation in the next seven days. While we are really, really watching right now our disturbance coming off of Africa, that one I'm afraid is going to make a lot of headlines in days to come as again we'll see how far west this goes we hope it turns north but the pattern unfortunately does not look like it's gonna be able to do that very easily right now nigel 90 mile an hour winds but it's expected to weaken in days and hours to come with that dry shear or that dry air and shear increasing well that's going to do with today's tropical weather outlook and discussion for wednesday September the 20th, 2023. I sure hope this video helped you out a lot, folks. If it did, please consider subscribing. You guys are really awesome. And also, be sure to check out Prestige Weather. If you guys don't know what Prestige Weather is, I would highly recommend checking out the link down below this video. If you enter my name, David, okay, just the name David, you get a 50% off discount for the first month of purchase. I wanted to make that clear. So if you join today, you get one uh, month of 50% off discount. And that means you can get this for half of the price that is being listed. In fact, if we go to the plans, right now it's $4.99. You get 50% off this price if you join right now. Link in the description below this video. But that's going to do with today's tropical weather outlook and discussion. See you back here in the next one. Share, like, and subscribe.